everybody and welcome back to Deb Creates and today we're going to look at the Bichon Frise. So this is Lottie, the Bichon Frise and Lottie is my friend Rose's little pet dog. So uh, we decided we'd have a go at making her and uh, so this is how she's turned out. So we'll give you a little look. So here she is. Little tail. So there's Lottie. That's a little ball. There we go. So there are no patterns for the Bichon Frise. Um, I couldn't find one anywhere. So what I did was went back to my little stock of patterns and generally you can find a pattern to fit a reasonable shape of a dog. So if the ears and the face shape is similar, it's going to work. So for Lottie, I used the Labrador. So there's the Labrador, very tatty as you can see. It's had it a long time. I think this is the first one I've got. But because you buy these um, on a file off the internet, you can actually just print it out again. So when it gets too tatty, I'll just reprint it and uh, I'll have it all nice and new again. So that's the beauty of these patterns and it's Alan Dart. So uh, if you're looking for the patterns to make the dogs, they're Alan Dart patterns. So uh, easily available from the internet as a download. And uh, so you just uh, print it out and uh, off you go. So a fairly simple pattern for the Labrador puppy and uh, which is our, turned into our Bichon Frise. Um, so to make this into a Bichon frieze, I've used a fluffy wool for her because they have a very fluffy, white fluffy coat. So um, I've used a wool and there's, there's a few names for this wool. I have some here, it's a creamy one and it's called popcorn. So that's your, your hairy wool there and it's called popcorn. But I have seen very similar wool. Um, with different names so um, so it's basically if you can find that sort of it's like a scarf wool really I think but that kind of hairy wool and when you knit it up it, it looks quite nice and like fur so uh, so that's what we used to make Lottie with um, so I've knitted all her body you just change onto that wool after you've done the, the paws and things like that and, and knit it you just knit it in um, when we came to the face that's a little bit different. So the face, I knitted in the cream wool, the plain wool, because I thought you wouldn't really see her features as well, maybe, if I um, if I covered it all in the fur. So I decided to leave her as sort of short a bit around her nose. So, um, so I made the face with just the cream wool that I've used on the paws, and then stitch on the nose, popped in the eyes, brown, so these are just brown toy eyes that you can get from the, uh, the craft shop um, and then here around her face this wool has had to be hooked in with um, a crochet hook so you basically go into the stitches that you've made pull pull through one take a piece of wool take it over and pull it back through and then knot it through pull it through itself and that secures it in and then you can go around and give her a, a trim up when she's uh, when she's finished and get the right length that you're looking for. So it's, it, does, um, it doesn't show you on this pattern that technique of hooking in the, the fur to make the longer coats, but um, it's not too difficult. It's like making a tassel really. So you, you, you double the wool, bend the wool in half, so, uh, and then put the hook, the hook through the stitch, pull it through and then pull the wool back through its own little hook so that it makes a little, uh, a little sort of it knots it in really. And, and that's how you do that. So, uh, so that was how we did her face, but um, but the rest of her is just knitted. It's just she's just been knitted. Um, it would have taken an awfully long time to hook in all of the fur on the dog, um, like I did with the AA dog. That was uh, that was the, where you have to um, fix the fur in with the crochet hook all the way through, and that was very time consuming. So this one not too bad because it's only a little bit round the face. So um, fairly straightforward pattern, not too difficult to do. Um, it's not the greatest wool to knit with. All of the hairy wools I find are quite difficult to knit with. Um, once you start knitting, you can't really see your stitches very much anymore. Uh, so that just makes it a little bit tricky. So sometimes you can actually like 
drop a stitch and not notice you did it and then you have to go back and start again so uh, that's happened a few times but um but yeah not uh, not too bad of a pattern um i stitched the nose on i didn't uh, i didn't buy a nose i stitched the nose and mouth on these are some black wool so that's fairly easy to do uh stitch the paws on you stitch the paw shapings in it shows you how to do that in the pattern and uh and we gave her a little ribbon because these sort of dogs are pretty uh they like to dress them up and uh, make them look pretty, don't they? So, um, so we put a little ribbon, and that's a bought collar. She's got a, a a red. You can see the red collar. She's got a little bought red collar there. I bought from the pet shop. It's only a couple of pounds, and um, just to finish her off. So there she is, all done. So, uh, so that's Lottie. So, uh, if you like our Bichon Freeze, give me a thumbs up, and. Uh, if you want to subscribe I think we're gonna have some possibly some needle felting next there's a I've got quite into that now so um, so we might have a look at some more needle felting and I'm sure there'll be some more dogs and cats along very shortly thanks for watching bye